this one's sometimes the toughest. You know, in college football, the, the most difficult thing is week one because there's no preseason, there's no scrimmage, there's no practice against other teams. I think that's the unique thing about college football. There's no, I mean, from grade school football and up, there's, everybody has some version of a scrimmage of some sorts, and, you know, college football doesn't. So the very first time you get a look at what your guys are going to do and how they're going to react and respond is in week one, a big week for us. So obviously we love where we left off last year. The uh, energy and momentum that was created, I think, throughout the entire season, but most, you know, but, but really at the, at the end, even in the bowl game, uh, really propelled us, I think, through the entire offseason. Really, really had a lot of great things happening here. Growth uh, from all, all of our team, um, you know. So that, that was big for us. Now, I think the, the the next step now is, you know, to play ball, and that's the that's the thing we keep talking about. It's 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 that time. Um, what I'm most excited about, not just that it's week one and those butterflies. Of, hey, how's everybody going to react? Response. I'm excited to see what Nipper Stadium is going to be like. I can honestly tell you that I haven't had the opportunity to see a, a night game. The electric, like I've heard so much about Nippert Stadium, the student section, the ruckus. I think for me, that's one of those things that's, you know, sit, sitting here for me to, to see. Last year, I think Navy, I think Temp are uh, two land. I think a couple of those really good games where we, you know, we had it rocking. They did a great job. Um, but I've never seen it at night in prime time, what it can really be like. And uh, I know that's what I'm excited for. And I know our guys are as well. Uh, a little bit about our, our team this year, I think. If I look back at you know the start of last year, the start of this year, I would say we are definitely a more mature team. I'd say we're a smarter team. I know we've got greater depth just from uh, the development, the things that we've done. So I'm excited about that, uh, and, I, and I like our leadership. I think last year was a unique group of leaders that really propelled us to do a lot of things. So this year we you know, we named five captains, and <clears throat> Morgan James, and Chris Ferguson, and Josiah Degara. On offense, Perry Young and uh, Brian Wright on defense. Uh, the challenge will be for them is the positive leadership in uh, in the midst of big stages like Thursday night. So there is the there is a challenge for those guys. There's a challenge for our team. Uh, but I think this is what it's all about. And to start off this way is uh, is special, and uh, it can't get here fast enough. You mentioned, you mentioned earlier in the off season about having to play well in big games. Have you talked to team about playing well in prime time what this well, is right I started. think the talk is about how do we handle our emotions I think that's the thing that we gotta <clears throat> see you try to create those types of things in, in all of your camps and things like that and, and we do it in, in the spring ball we have a kick scrimmage to, to try to get the you know, kickers in some of those situations where the emotions are really really high a win and a loss uh, we try to do that in the weight room and a lot of things that we do with our guys to see how they react and respond um, but there's nothing like the bright lights, and I think that's the unique thing. And some of those games I didn't think we played great in the big stages last year, we still won. So we found a way to continue to work and, and win. Um, I think this year the, the, the focus is on, hey, going into these, we've got to understand what it takes. You know, it's not the big plays, it's the little things, it's the things we got to do each and every day. Um, and we'll, we'll see on, uh, on Thursday night for sure. Luke, what did that, that win at UCLA last year say about UC football generally and your program specifically? Why? It was one. It was one of uh, us 11. But I think when you can get the first one for us last year uh, in the way that it happened, it wasn't just that we won. Um, the ability to go on the road as far away as we went uh, and then the way it happened. That there's a lot of things that really happened in that game and in that locker room afterwards that we had kind of been preaching and talking about. But as we all know, that we see better than we hear. And for those guys to actually see some of the aggressive nature pay off for us and what we had talked about going into camp, um, seeing how guys rallying together can pay off for you, and then to see that, you know, that kind of a combination of all those things in a locker room afterwards, because we hadn't had that experience. And I mean that is, when I say we won last year because of a locker room, there's a lot of things that go on inside a locker room that, that are unique and different. Um, but when you can see it come out, the love, the respect, the trust that we had talked about, but have a hard time really showing, uh, at the end of that game, you saw a lot of it. And I think it spoke uh, to all of our team. I know it spoke to me. And that's why that flight home for me last year was not just because we won, but uh, the way we won and, the, and what happened in that locker room afterwards gave me a really good feeling. 
guys made a decision on between Mets and Vinny? Then would you prefer to keep Chris at, at left tackle? No, I think we're, I think we're, Mets is going to be our starter. Uh, we still the challenges that we got out to play is six, seven guys up front. So the ability for us to roll a little bit is going to be big. You know, Vinny has also moved inside to play some guard for us as well. Uh, so there's a few combinations there. You know, last year we were very fortunate, with the exception to Garrett. Um, we kept the same lineup the entire season. You know, I, I hope that that's the way we can do it, but the reality is the challenge I've had for, for all of our team this year is, you know, those 1As and 1Bs you keep hearing me talk about and the ability to roll some of those guys in there in different situations is going to be key for us. So uh, Mets will start off as a left tackle and Fur will start off as a right tackle. And, uh, you know, that's what we'll, we'll go from the get-go. Then you'll be able to go to either side and also can go inside for us too. Does having played each other a year ago and having some familiarity with each other help you in some ways to prepare? Uh, I, I, there's a lot of film to watch anyway. I think that that's more the unique thing. I think for week one, maybe just because you have played them, you have a little bit of an idea, you know, what they're going to look like more than anything. So I think for our guys to understand that they're going to walk out there be longer than what we maybe have seen in the past and big and physical, you know, I think that uh, I think it helped playing them last year. But in week one, I mean, there's so many new things, you know, I mean, they're in the second year of the program. I mean, we're a lot different from our first year to our second year. I know they're going to be a lot different from year one to year two, uh, not just in the way they look. They're going to have the same pretty uniforms, but, you know, they're going to be a lot different of a team. Um, might look different physically, too, but uh, we know we're going to expect a lot more. What did you see them improve on looking back at film over the course of last season? Well, they were very efficient later in the year. You know, they didn't make, maybe win all those games, but there were some games where 49, 42, and I mean, they're in it in, in every stretch of the matter. Um, you know, so I, I think for me, looking at obviously Coach Kelly and you know his offense, the things, the way he's been in the past, is the, the progression that they were at the beginning of the year was a lot different than they were at the end of the year. And uh, you know, I know sometimes that. They said, well, they gave up so many points there and they got beat 49 42. But the reality is, you saw things you know, flowing a lot different, a lot better. You know, not, not just the tempo of things, but the way their offense worked and was efficient and score points. So I think that was a big step. You know, like he would probably tell you that it didn't pay off in the long run, maybe with the amount of wins. But I know in my first year here, you know, there, there's are some big steps you know, to see that offense start to get to get clicking because a lot of people gained a lot of confidence from that, especially from your quarterback. You know, and we did last year the same way. We gained a lot of confidence as our quarterback continued to play better, whether they were putting up a ton of points or not. It just gives you that sense of we're always in it. Tempo is always a big thing with him. It didn't seem to bother you guys too much last season. Do, do you feel like they figured it out a little bit more, or was there something no, you guys I mean, the tempo is, is all over the place now, so I don't, I don't know that it's you know, uh, something that catches people off guard. I think when you're moving the football, it's a lot more difficult. I think early in the year, last year, particularly our game, um, they didn't move the football as well, which you know, makes it harder to tempo. But that's where you see them later in the year moving the football better, uh, so their tempo became you know, more of a factor. And it wasn't always just spread out tempo. It was just maybe lining up and looking and getting a call. Um, but it puts a little bit more stress and heat on, on the defense, especially when they are moving the football. In particular, um, much of an emphasis are you putting on stopping the run with Josh McKelly? Well, I mean, I think it's, we always got to start somewhere. And the run game is, you know, there's no, there's no worse way to, to get beat up than have the ball shoved down your throat. Um, but it, there, there, it's a balance, you know. I mean, that's the thing nowadays with offense. Is that you think you can just stop the run, you know, and all of a sudden you look up there and that ball's being slung down the field a bunch too. So we know it starts there. It's always going to start up front. You know, our guys up front did a phenomenal job last year. You know, Cortez and Cope and Pitts and Kamani Fitz did a, did a really, really good job, especially in week one. They gave us some momentum. Uh, we're going to have to do the same thing this year. We can't just you know, load everybody up inside and say, hey, we're, we're going to leave everybody else one-on-one. -on -one. We've got to be able to mix it up a little bit more and still feel comfortable stopping the run. How big of a, a moment game is this for UC football? Coming off 11 to the year, prime time national TV, first game of the season, Recruits are watching, fans are watching. It's going to be close, if not, to a sellout crowd. I how big, of a, how, how big of a moment is this for UC to just keep that momentum going? I mean, it's big. I mean, at the start of all years are really big. I think with uh, the stage that we're put on right here, it's even bigger. You know, and I think that's what I told these guys the other day. That's just, this is what they wanted. This is what I wanted. This is what we wanted. You know, now we can't be shy from saying, hey, now we've got it. We got to go get it. Um, 
so you know when we came here, this is what we talked about about having these big moments, these big games uh, where they matter a lot. It just happens to be week one uh, because of the way we finished and the way we played last year. But you know, I think that uh, all in all, this is why they came here. And you know, they saw this probably three or four years ago in a lot of situations. Um, in the last couple of years, maybe we haven't had the opportunity to have a game like this, um, but uh, it's here now. And it's talking about the moment, being in the moment, living in the moment. We got to be able to handle the moment, and uh, that's why we're again excited about Thursday night to to get this thing kicked off. Have you guys got an update on Chuck's knee? Uh, Chuck had surgery, so he will be out. Um, he'll be out probably for most of the, the whole season. So uh, yeah, we won't, we won't have Chuck. He's still? Uh, yeah. Yep. So one of those freak things, um, you know, we have to deal with it. You know, we've had to deal with it a little bit. We didn't, we didn't really know off the bat what it was going to be because it was a non-contact of any sorts. And, you know, the good thing is we've got some depth back there and it gives us some flexibility. So how much does that put on, I guess, Ryan Montgomery? If, if it does a lot. Guys? You know, we've we got some young guys that we're going to count on you know, with, with Ryan Montgomery and with uh, 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 Tucker, Trey Tucker being some returns guy for us. You know, where, where Chuck would have been a big return guy for us. You know, it would have been a change up back for us. Um, but that's kind of the, the role that Ryan now has to fill in with, you know, with Mike Warren and Dokes being the, you know, the guys carrying the heavy load, and then the ability to be able to change it up a little bit with Brian Montgomery. Um, you know, it just limits us a little bit. But I think even even more so in the special teams and the return game, I think Chuck was a was a real threat. Does it change any timelines with Tavion in terms of him coming back? No, no, we're still good. I mean, Tavion's a part of the program. Uh, we're still working him back in, getting him back into shape, and uh, you know, just. Figuring out what's best for him too, as uh, we know he's going to have an opportunity to be there for us. Uh, it might not just be right now, right this minute, uh, but we got big plans for him. Any initial reports on how the surgery went? Everything going? No, everything was good. Okay. I mean, it's, it was they say great, however great it could be. You know, when it's a <laughs> surgery, it's doctors like it went perfect. So <laughs> perfect would have been not to have it, but it is what it is. Uh, there's been some. Rumors surrounding a James Wiggins injury. I don't know if you have any news to report on that. No, he, he tweaked his knee last night. Um, so he's going to see the doctor here this afternoon. Uh, we don't have a full rundown on what exactly it is just yet. So we're optimistic, hoping. Um, but we got to get prepared. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he'll be running around with us right there today or, or not, but uh, we'll hopefully find out here soon. Will Perry Young be on any restriction on torn ACL last season? No. No, Perry's one of those guys that we've had to hold him back. We could have played him in spring ball. He was ready within six months. You know, just one of those unique individuals that heal really well and fast and work really hard. Um, so he's been he's been full go free since the time we started camp. Uh, could have been at the end of spring, but we held him because we didn't feel like he you know needed a ton of spring ball. He started for two years and played a lot of football for us. Um, you know he's done a phenomenal job. You guys just like ready to get out there and play against somebody different than yourselves like you've been doing in practice? That's that's the toughest thing about college is just not practicing against somebody else, you know, in some way, somehow. So, yeah, week one is the, there, there's more anxiety, I think, in week one than there is in any week. I know for me, you know, I mean, I, I didn't sleep last night. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'll probably won't sleep again tonight just because the anxiety of that week one, uh, just rolling that thing out there and getting started is, is so big. You know, we haven't, I mean, we went through camp and probably only had three live days. You know, now there's some of those days are full out scrimmages, but, you know, just the, the your ability to, to play the game, you know, at a live situation nowadays, it just doesn't happen nearly as much. And so that gives you some anxiety about, hey, live tackling and taking care of the football offensively and all those different things that you know you did last year, you know you did a great job of it, but you just haven't had the opportunity to do it as much uh, throughout the offseason. Does it make any sense to have a preseason game or two or controlled scrimmage against somebody? Is that feasible? I don't know if it is, to be honest with you. I, I know it would be very difficult, probably, um, just based on schedules. But, I mean, you know, with, with the way football is right now, and you know, they're, they're trying to you know, limit the amount of times to do tackling and things like that, I, maybe down, down the road at some point in time, there'll be a way to practice with some people. Um, but I think that's the unique thing about college football. That every game matters so much uh, because when it starts, it starts. There's not a there's not much warm up. It's not 
any other season at the beginning of the year, it's like, okay, well, these first three or four games, they might not be that big of a deal. Uh, week one really, really matters in college football, and I guess that's the way they like it. And that, on the, the, your schedule right out of the gate, a lot of uh, tough games you can feature on national television three times. How important is it to just focus on, as you mentioned, be in the moment, just focus on one game at a time? That's what we got to do. We kind of stopped tar- talked about that from you know, the end of last year, is that ability to be in the moment handle those big stages and those situations and that's where leadership comes in. Leadership from the head coach, leadership from those seniors and those guys in your program. Um, you know, that's what we'll have to see. We try to do it as best we possibly can. Our programs kind of build on that with you know the way we train and the way we work out in the weight room in the off season. Um, but like I said, there's nothing like the, the, the pressure of the bright lights and, and how you'll handle it. Are we good? Um, any other injury updates? Sorry, you guys know that, but I know Moj has been out, Blue Smith, any of those guys? In the uh, Blue's been back. Uh, Moj, I think, is still probably another couple weeks. Uh, he hasn't been running around with us just yet. So with, with James, are you hoping to hear something by the end of the day or tomorrow? Yeah, well, we would probably know here by the end of the day. Um, we, we would need to know by the end of the day. So we haven't, uh, haven't met with the doctors just yet. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.